All right, let's get this thing uh, started here a little bit early, just because I want to test something out um, and see whether or not notifications work a little bit better or <laughs> as well as they normally do um, if I start the stream a little bit early. Um, holy shit, we have four people here already. Oh my god. <laughs> and YouTube has yet to send me the notification. <laughs> and I'm even logged into my alt. <laughs> oh well, that's... That's par for the course by this point. Um, this site is absolutely awful, and I hate everything about it. Um, but now you lovely folks at home. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, glad you all could make it to uh, my, my, my pissing contest stream. Um, give us a few more minutes here. See if anybody else is... This is just going to be a general chatting stream. Um, more or less just simply because I do have a few things that I would like to kind of get off my chest. And, you know, as a forward to all of you guys, it's not that I'm trying to start shit with people, um, even though I probably will eventually have to mention some people by name, um, just because the, 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 it's, it's not just a YouTube problem. It is a YouTube problem, but it's not specifically just you know the silicon valley cunts who you know worship moloch and you know sacrifice infants in his name and you know smear themselves with fucking period blood or whatever um it's a lot more localized so um crap man youtube is where dreams go to die messiah it's not that capitalism is evil the people it, the people are in it uh, well, no, I mean, I, I tend to agree. I, I think that there's needs to be more of a distinction between capitalism and corporatism, because a lot of the complaints that people have, you know, whenever they talk about like any sort of like AAA game developer or, you know, big social media site, it, it mostly comes down to corporatism. It doesn't come down to capitalism. If it came down to capitalism, it would be more so these sorts of people are trying to compete with others in a free market and, you know, trying to create the best and most appealing product imaginable. Profit definitely does need to, to factor into that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it benefits everybody. Corporatism, you know, you, you deal with shit like ESG scores and nonsense, like literally everything that YouTube does, um, disabling the dislike button because Microsoft got pissy that so many people were mass disliking their, their streams, that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I definitely do think that there needs to be a distinction drawn between the two. Um, lady says, hi. Hello, lady. Uh, glad you could show up. All right. It is now officially 9 o'clock, which is the official time, which I had designated to start the stream. And YouTube still hasn't yet to send a notification out. So, yeah. <laughs> um... Oh, Torish, I'm still looking at notification options in my downtime. Life gets busy and too many flashy options do not have the longevity I'm looking for. Hey, that's that's totally fine, my friend. Uh, for those of you who are not in the know, Torish is basically our resident tech guy. He knows a lot about basically anything having to do with IT. Um, and he, he'll, he'll tell you firsthand, you, YouTube's entire code is essentially friggin' spaghetti. It, it's a mess. So we are currently looking into alternate avenues to possibly send out notifications to people who are already subscribed to the channel, because that's kind of what pisses me off. Like, I, I wouldn't have so much of a problem about not being able to expand like that. That's also a problem, too. You know, we're <laughs> four months into the year and we just barely are scraping over 700 subs. Um, but... You know, like, it wouldn't be so much of a problem just so long as YouTube actually fucking bothered to notify the audience that I've already cultivated. You know, is, is that really too much to ask? I don't think it is, but whatever. Holy shit, we got 12 people watching already. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you guys, you're not going to like this stream. Or maybe you will, I don't know. But um, I'm, I definitely am not going to like this stream. So, uh, tit for tats. Awesome. Honey, I am home. Well, I'm glad that you're, uh, home. Um, 
I don't know where else you would be on on Sunday unless you you work a a poor white or a blue collar job like I do, and you your weekends basically belong to the band. But uh, hey, I'm glad that you can join us. Great to great to see that uh, you know you're spending some time with uh, your your favorite mythology YouTuber Messiah, <laughs> which I I don't I don't I don't know how many people would necessarily say that about me, but. Uh, I, I have been told that, so uh, that's, not, that's not me tooting my own horn. <laughs> Please don't misconstrue that. Um, so I'll, I'll get I'll get to the comments and whatever here in just a second. You guys can go ahead and continue chatting, but basically, the meat and potatoes that I really want to get into here with today's stream is I. I, I did a little bit of self-reflection and I really don't like doing YouTube anymore. Um, <laughs> basically, I said at the beginning of last year even, I was like, you know, I love doing what I do. I love writing scripts. I love, you know, educating people. I love hearing, you know, the positive feedback from some people, you know, where it's just like, you know, a lot of people have reached out to me and said, you know, your videos have really helped me out, you know, with like school or some shit like that. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm very flattered to hear about that sort of stuff. I, I still like doing all of that. What I hate is A, the editing process, and B, dealing with YouTube's bureaucratic bullshit nonsense, which we're, we'll, we'll definitely be getting in, into that a little bit later. But um, as far as like the editing side of things goes, um, I, I had set out at the beginning of that last year to really, you know, kind of expand my repertoire of like competent video editors because I've had bad video editors work for me before they're they're very <laughs> I don't want to use the word stupid but it's just like you know I'm 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 somebody who's self-taught with like free editing software that he, that he basically found stuck to the bottom of his shoe <laughs> you know and it runs about as well as that too but you know if if I can make something 10 100 times better than whatever these people are doing and they're advertising themselves as like you know contracted editors or whatever is just kind of like man you, you might want to rethink your life but um so last year we kind of expanded a little bit and so there's essentially been three people at the helm doing editing for all of the projects that we see there's me there's uh franz or final blackout as he's called and Goblin. Uh, Goblin kind of came in a little bit later last year. I think we, I had already been... No, I, I know I would already been, um, you know, doing work with Franz for a while. Um, and listen, they're great guys. They're very easy to get along with. But the issue that I am starting to have with them is the rate of delivery is not at all satisfactory especially compared to like what it once was and you know full transparency this is mostly my fault okay i'm i'm definitely not the best director in the world i when i do write my scripts i write them with the assumption that i am going to be the one editing them at at, at the time so you know i don't maybe spell things out that probably should be spelled out but a lot of it, it just kind of comes down to the fact that, you know, we're in April right now, the middle of April. I've had two videos, two main videos uploaded to the channel. You know, I, I've had little tiny tangent uh, live streams like I'm, like I'm doing right now, which normally just kind of get private and I don't really fucking care. And um, I had that one short or whatever that I uploaded. But um, that's about it two main videos in four months you know that's <laughs> that's awful and you know the reason why I'm kind of 
you know, airing out the dirty laundry here to all of you guys is mainly because like this is an issue that affects all of you. Because I, I know a lot of you say, you know, oh, Messiah, I appreciate you, you know, putting out your videos or whatever and, you know, um, educating us in, you know, these sorts of things and that we all sort of have an interest in. And, you know, more and more, I'm just kind of asking myself, what videos, you know? So to kind of put it into some perspective for you, um, towards the end of last year, this is probably a few days like before Christmas or whatever, I gave Blackouts uh, a choice between, you know, all of the different projects. I, I, I kind of posted it up to them and I said, you know, here's, um, you know, what I'm planning on doing for the next year, you know, go ahead and go nuts, pick out whichever one sounds the most interesting to you. He chose the mermaid video and also the Koshay video. Um, the mermaid video did actually come out. That, that came out late January or was that early February? I'd, I'd have to double check that. But um, that one eventually did come out. And um, I have it, I have it right here in the DMs. I, I looked at it and he said, uh, um, by the first, the first of February, he said, I've already started work on the second project. And I said, okay, that's fine. You know, um, the issue is, uh, two and a half months later, I have not seen anything. Like I have literally seen no works of progress. I have not had any updates from him. It's very frustrating because like, I'm trying not to ride these guys, but at the same time, you know, I, at the very least message them like once a week, just to kind of ask, Hey, where are we at with this project? You know, do you need anything to, you know, help things along or whatever, you know? And it, it seems like almost every time I ever ask them, they're like, Oh yeah, I'm almost done. And then, you know, two weeks to a month later, I still got nothing. So that's not nearly as bad as Goblin, though. Um, I gave him the project that he's currently working on back in November. Um, hold on here. I got the exact date. Yeah, November, November 5th. So that is five months and nine days later. And, you know, to his credit, I have seen works in progress for it. And the last one that he sent me, it looked like it was pretty much done. And, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, so so I'm figuring, OK, maybe like two days later, three days later, you know, for the amount of work that's in there. That was about a month ago, something like that. And it's just, <laughs> these are not big projects, by the way. These are not big projects. Just going based off of the audio, they're... I, I, I think the Koshe one's like maybe 15 minutes long. And the, um, the, the the video that I have Goblin working on, that's like 11 minutes long just by raw audio. And I understand, you know, it, it shifts around a little bit because when you add like B-roll footage or, you know, like extra audio or whatever, that expands it out by... At most, maybe like a minute, though, <laughs> you know, and it, it, it is very frustrating because I was rushing to get out that video that I that I posted on Horus versus Set. Um, that that was the most challenging video I've ever done. I think it turned out pretty good. It's just the fact that nobody saw it, but we'll get into that in just a second. Don't you worry. But I started that probably at the very beginning of February, maybe, maybe, maybe somewhere around there. And, you know, I, 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 I admittedly soldiered through that whole thing, trying to get it done as, as quickly as I could while also still making it look as good as I possibly could. And, you know, at the same time, the whole, the whole time, I'm just like, I'm feeling burnt out. 
I need to take a few days, this, that, and the third, um, with everything that I'm doing, because, you know, like this is not a full-time gig for me. You know, I've, I'm just, I'm just like any, anybody else. I, I got a fucking full-time job that I got to do. I've got a bunch of other familial, uh, requirements to fulfill. And, you know, I, I always try and squeeze in work whenever I can. It's just, <sighs> It's, it's very difficult to, you know, kind of time manage things. And, you know, I thought last year we were doing pretty good with uploads, get up, uploading wise. We were doing at least a video every month, sometimes two. So that was pretty good. And that was with me, Goblin and Franz all working on full cylinders. And I thought that, you know, that's fantastic. The issue kind of just comes down to now it, it almost feels like we're in a rut. Like nobody's either nobody's really motivated in the way that I would like everybody to be, or you know, I I, I honestly don't know what's going on with the whole thing. And you know. Normally, I, I privatize my streams, but this one I'm thinking I'm going to leave up at least for a couple days. Uh, send them both the link and just say, like, listen, I'm I'm not necessarily mad about you know the whole lack of updates and you know the the diminishing returns on what I have contracted you guys to do. I'm just really sorely disappointed. You know, you know what, I'm, what I mean? And it really does weigh on me a lot. Simply because, you know, like, the technical stuff... Well, I, I guess editing would be technical stuff. The, the more nuanced stuff, like the researching, scripting, and stuff like that, I still do all of that myself. You know, that's... That's, that, that's all my gig. Um, and a lot of the editing still is my gig even though I would like for it not to be because I'm, I'm not, a, I don't think I'm a particularly good editor. Some, some of you might want to challenge me on that one, but I, I, I will tell you full stop. I'm not very good at editing videos together. Um, and I would absolutely, I think that if I did have a dedicated team of people working for me who consistently were able to, churn out projects and maybe if I was a little bit more strong armed with them and in terms of like giving them like strict deadlines to adhere to maybe then you know we could see <sighs> what what I would like to get to is like an upload schedule of like a video every every two weeks or so and I definitely do think that we could do that it's just not the way that things are working out right now. So that's kind of my frustrations that I have right now with my editors. And, you know, I, I, I really do hate to kind of put them on the spot like that. But um, things need to be said. You know, things definitely need to be said. And normally... I would like to, you know, just resolve all this in DMs or whatever. I can't even do that now. You know, like, like I said, I message them like once a week. I don't think that's too overbearing. And sometimes it's months before I hear anything out of them. So, needless to say, I'm probably going to be looking to try and get some new people on board with the whole thing. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I don't, I don't even know, man. By this point, the biggest thing I used to look for is like actual talent and people who aren't, you know, drooling Neanderthals with regards to editing anymore. No, though, I'm just kind of at the point where I'm just like, man, I, I think I would value consistency more. Honestly, I, I, I just really would like for the guys I have right now 
to be more consistent and you know anybody who i i do decide to hire in the future to be consistent that's just me um let, let, let me let me go ahead here and uh, kind of get into some of the chat here because I, I have been neglecting that in my little tirade uh so crapman says i understand that messiah paying freelancers is a high reward low risk there's still risk though i'm glad you are being fair to them i yeah and listen i i <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna be very honest with you guys i'm a doormat in real life i let people walk over me all the time and you know it's in this sort of, this particular situation yeah i probably could be a little bit more of a hard ass on them like i said i i, I could be that, that sort of guy who's like no this is when you get the first draft to, done and on my desk you know by now otherwise i you're not getting paid you know that i, I could be that guy instead i'm a lot more of a softy i'm just like yeah man just take however much time you need you know that sort of thing and i'm starting i'm starting to see now that it's more so like i think i just i need to bare my teeth a little bit more and you know at the same time though i do feel bad because i wish i could pay these guys more i do pay them <laughs> don't get that twisted i do pay my editors um but i do not like I wish I could get more. I honestly do. But like the fact of the matter is I'm 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 a low income guy from you know Middle East the Middle Eastern part of the country. I I don't have much to offer you, especially when you know we're not even at seven thousand subs. You know, as of right now. We do have really good and loyal patrons and channel members. I appreciate them to the moon and back. You know, it, I think it's great that anybody would support this channel in a monetary fashion. But at the same time, it's like, I, I can't exactly pay you like 500 bucks a project. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I try to be fair with how much I give them. And I, I usually let them give me a quote on what they think that the work would be worth. And, you know, I, I typically just kind of jive with that. Sometimes I even pay him a little bit more, but <laughs> little pinky finger on that, that corner of my mouth, just to show you all what a, what a good Samaritan I am. No, don't take, don't, don't assume that of me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bad man. I'm, 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 the, I'm the kind of man that your, your mother tells you not to bring home. Um... <laughs> Uh, Rudolf uh, Zeppeli, um, he's kind of been, you know, sporadically commenting, but you know, he's just kind of been agreeing with what I what I what I what I've been saying, uh, saying yeah, that's understandable. Uh, I'm glad that you know you <laughs> do agree with me. I and apologies, I am really bad at um, re reading through uh, some of the comments, especially when you know I am at a little bit of a lull trying to get done saying what I'm trying to say. Uh, Mr. Gemini's Tarot, you are the man. Love your content. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Um, glad you could join us tonight. Um, this is not necessarily the most pleasant stream, but holy shit, this is the most live viewers that I've had in quite a while. Um, usually, YouTube likes to screw me over, and I I'm, I'm curious how many of you actually get the notifications. If you, if you would be so kind as to you know, say in, in the side chat as to whether or not you actually got the notification because we are 20 minutes past the premiere time, more like 25 uh, from when I actually went live. Still have not received a notification on 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 my on my uh, on my phone, which is the only place where they actually do send notifications, which is part of the major issue when it comes to um to youtube um olin uh tona teeth i i apologize i know i'm butchering that name 
Uh, man, that sucks. I hope you manage to resolve these issues with your editors. I, I hope so too. It's, it's, it's honestly a long time coming and I would be kind of surprised if um, they didn't see it coming necessarily. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, handle this with as firm but fair a hand as I possibly can. Um, all right. Um, Church says it's hard to put a project together when you're waiting on others. Yeah. No, believe you me. Um, I've, I've been doing this YouTube thing long enough to know that it's... It, it sucks. It sucks uh, trying to rely on, you know, getting people's thing in. So, um, Old Man Balls and Gash says, I got mine. Uh, Lee Shadowhug says, I got mine. Uh, but Rudel says, I did not receive a notification as far as I can see. Saw your live stream, though. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I guess at least so long as they put it on the main page, I... Uh, we're, we're about to get into my, my, my gripes with you with YouTube and the way that they do pretty much everything uh, as far as like notifying people. But um, uh, Olin says, I did not get a notification. I was just scrolling YouTube searching for a video to watch while I eat dinner. Then I saw you where live. We're live, I, I assume you were trying to say. Um, like I said, I guess that's fair but at the same time you know i don't want it i don't really want these things to be reliant on chance encounters where people are just like randomly scrolling and they're like oh hey messiah's live you know <laughs> i would prefer if i do go live which is very rare once in a bl blue moon i upload even more infrequently as you guys can probably tell and you know it, it frustrates me because I know a lot of you guys tell me you do not get notifications, period. You do everything right, even though the four step process in order to get notified when, it, when a channel goes live is absolutely ridiculous. But some of you actually do it and you still don't get notifications. I do it myself and I still don't get notifi notified. So it's. Oh God, I'm going to go through, I'm going to get through chat real quick and then I'll start my rant on YouTube. Uh, Tarish, I received a notification on my phone. Let's be honest. I was going to be here if I got a notification or not. <laughs> Probably. Well, I mean, you're in the discord. So, you know, people in the discord, they kind of have a little bit of an advantage because I do tend to ping everyone when I do go live. Just because you know youtube is famously unreliable about sending out notifications so if you guys do want to stay up to date on everything that i do as of right now that's the best place to do it um and yeah i relate to finding it difficult to put your foot down on people like i don't want to come across as rude doing it but at the same time when it involves work it's unfortunately necessary yeah and see like that, that that's basically what, what what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is like this has been an issue that's been ongoing for a couple of months right now and I'm not I wouldn't say I'm putting my foot down because I I wouldn't say that I'm being belligerent or anything about this I'm not I'm not angry I want to I want to reiterate that point again I'm not angry I'm disappointed um. I can get angry and I have gotten angry at people before and I just hope that it does not come to the point where I have to get angry. So, um, Lady Shack says maybe it's a difference between creator and subscribers and maybe, but like, well, see the, the thing is though, Normally, when I do go live, I switch over to my Messiahs and History account where I do have, you know, the whole shebang set up for notifications. And technically, since that is an entirely separate account, I should get notified for it. 
and yet I still don't. So, um, <laughs> Jerry says, I'm always looking at the Discord. I'm casually working on, on 11 laptops at the moment, also laundry. God bless you, man. You are a digital mule. <laughs> And I mean that in the most respectful way possible. All right. Um, so, I mean, I've kind of been bitching about it. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into it right now. <laughs> this is the most unmotivated I have ever felt. Just in general. It, o- over the past several years. Um, you know, it, just consistently getting screwed over by youtube not even not even in the sense of like not expanding fast enough which is also a problem i i i i try to be humble but at the same time i definitely do think that we should have hit 10k a while ago and growth has been very very slow uh especially compared to like the output of videos that we were actually doing last year um growth has been glacially slow and the problem that i've been having ever since the beginning of even last year is just the audience that i already had cultivated is not getting notified for my stuff and it is stupid youtube does this very very stupid thing with the organization of its pages so if you open up a new tab right now, um, do a little, a little bit of an experiment. Open up a YouTube. The very first thing that you get is the home page. And you know, there are there are multiple different channels on here that I don't even recognize. It, it's like it's things that I don't recognize. There are things relating to Jurassic Park of all things I have never looked up a Jurassic Park video in my life and it's just like oh no this is what the algorithm chooses to think that you like meanwhile I'm looking through I'm like halfway down the page I see maybe two three channels that I'm actually subscribed to showing me old videos of theirs like, 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 like these videos are like a couple weeks old. Why YouTube does not prioritize showing people the channels that they actually bother to subscribe to first and foremost is beyond me. Your subscription tab should honestly show up first. Instead, now it's third. It's under, it's under goddamn shorts which is <laughs> YouTube stop trying to be TikTok. You're not TikTok. Stop trying to stop trying to be something that you're not. You know, you, you have a very successful thing going here, but I mean this is well, I mean that's going back to the whole adpocalypse thing. YouTube was trying to be TV even though they had TV beat. You know, beat like a like a trailer park housewife. And you know, but all of a sudden they're just like, no, actually, we want to pivot and be more like commercialized television. And everybody hated him for it. And it's the same thing now. Now, now they're embracing like this trend of content that's less than 60 seconds long. And it really does rot your brain. But needless to say, subscription should be first and foremost on people's, you know, screen as soon as they open up a new tab for YouTube you can put home maybe like a second down I would maybe just like relabel that to like explore because nine times out of ten they show you stuff that algorithmically you're more likely to click on but at the same time you're also you're also not interested enough in it to actually bother subscribing to the content and and or you're not likely to watch more than one video pertaining to the channel like i i I know some people they come in they watch the narcissism explained video on my channel and then they're done 
They, I never see them comment on anything else. You know, I don't, I, I, I can't see individually who likes all of my videos. But I assume, for the most part, that's basically it. And you know what? That's fine. If that's all you, if that's all you want to get out of it, that's fine. You don't have to subscribe to the channel by, by that point. I appreciate you giving it a view, maybe a like, a comment. Fine. That's good. That's that's, that's all I, I could want. But, you know, the, the people who are genuinely interested enough just in mythology in general, if they actually bother to subscribe, there should be no further steps to it. They YouTube should prioritize that content to the people who actually seek it out. But they don't. You know, it, it's it's all algorithms and bots and shit like that. And oh my god, if you don't have premium, it's it's ads. It's ads everywhere. It's obnoxious how many ads they show. So that's that's what I what I think it, it should be. But you know, getting more into it though past the pragmatism do you know what you have to actually do to get notified for when a channel goes live because it isn't just subscribe and hit the bell i think the bell in of itself is unnecessary but no what you have to do is you have to subscribe you have to click the bell icon and then it gives you a drop down menu and for whatever reason, the first option is none. You get no notifications from that channel. Personalized, quote unquote, whatever the hell that means. Basically, you'll never see that channel ever again. Or all. And you have to click all. Otherwise, you know, it, it's up to the algorithm as to whether or not they think that you're worthy enough to fucking view the content. I don't know what the hell they're doing over there besides sacrificing babies. Um, then there's a fourth step. By the way, if you are a desktop user and you typically like to watch YouTube through there or through a TV or something like that, which is a surprising number of people, you, there's a lot of people who like to watch YouTube through their TV. You're shit out of luck, my friend. You, you will not get notified for anything. What you have to do is on your mobile device, you have to go into your 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 no, your settings for the specific YouTube app and enable notifications. And then you might get the notification. I did all that on my alt account and I still don't get notified. So really it's more or less who the hell knows when you're going to get notified for this shit. Now, does all of that sound convoluted and stupid? Yeah, it's almost like it's convoluted and stupid. It should not take so many hoops to jump through to do something as basic as let your audience know that you made something new that they, they very well could very much so enjoy. I think a lot of you would slash already have enjoyed the Horace versus Set video. But the issue is, I know a large majority of my audience has not gotten the notification. That video has been up for over a month now. It's, <laughs> the views are, are like reflective of like 10% of my subscriber base and that's not even accounting for you know outside viewers you know just happening across the channel for whatever reason and I, I did look at my statistics just the other day and I shared it on discord you know you know um and and they'll, they'll tell you how much of your traffic gets directed from where whether it's re video recommendations or searches or whatever Guess how many of my views were attributed to notifications? 0.7%. That is audacious. That is absolutely asinine. <laughs> that is ridiculous 
to every extent of the word. Like, why, why is it like this? <sighs> anyway, um, let me very quickly here, uh, go ahead and I'll try and catch up here a little bit with, um, the chat, uh, Rudol, I appreciate you, man. Um, the whole thing is like, if, if you do sort of like, um, more reactionary sort of con comments, like, yeah, or whatever, I might not be able to get that, get to you in time. So I, I'll have absolutely no idea what, you, what you're talking about. I will probably skip over that. Unfortunately, I, it's, it's nothing against you. It's just more or less like I'm, I'm being stupid and I'm not paying attention and I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm old. Let me rant. <laughs> Um, um, a lot of new small channels I noticed end up being completely forgotten by the YouTube algorithm. They aren't recommended to people anymore, so only the few hundred dedicated viewers watch them. Yeah, and so here's, here's the thing that I also noticed about YouTube, and they've started doing this fairly recently, and I know it can't be good for certain channels. I... Whenever I'm just like listening to music or whatever, every once in a while they'll recommend like somebody's Let's Play channel or like some indie band's channel, and they make they they I, I have clicked on the video once or twice. I don't like the music that they make. It's just not to my taste. It could be to somebody else's taste, you know. And you know more power to them. That'd be great if, you know, they could actually expand their audience out to the people who actually want to consume it. But the issue is the algorithm is always listening. And so, you know, if they show these channels just randomly pop up in my, in my, my home feed and I'm just like, I honestly have zero interest whatsoever in your music or the game that you're playing or something like that. They take that as a slight against that channel. They, 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 they literally will put it into the algorithm that they put it out there for somebody to view, but they didn't bother clicking on it. Probably because it wasn't specifically catered to that individual, but you know, we're YouTube, we're infallible. We, we don't make mistakes. And so what ends up happening is they stop putting that out on the algorithm quite so much because they saw, oh, you know, these people who are not interested in this sort of content anyway are not clicking on the video. And I'm wondering how often that happens to me. How often do my videos actually do pop up in somebody's, you know, feed, but it's more like I have absolutely no interest in mythology why why the hell is youtube recommending this shit to me and they don't even bother looking giving the video a second glance and then that ends up hurting me in the long run it, it just seems like if i can understand if you know people click on the video and then they're just like man th this sucks they dislike it they hit don't recommend this channel to me anymore you know, on there. And then, you know, they pain, they kind of penalize the channel for, you know, essentially making trash content. I can understand that. But if your algorithm is inherently broken and people who show absolutely no interest in what you're doing, don't show that interest, that shouldn't be held against you. I mean, I mean, for God's sake, that's like trying to sell hot dogs at a vegan convention. It, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, um, let, let me see here. Um, Turish, my offer to replace Bibles in hotels with a variant Bible still stands. Um, we might actually have a little bit of an update on that. Um, coming fairly soon. Um, it's probably not going to be a very in straight up Bibles, but um, I have been talking with Goblin, and I don't know how serious he is about this, but he has suggested to me, you know, possibly making it into like a comic book series. And I'm like, oh, okay, that, that'd be kind of cool. You know, kind of do like a visual novel sort of thing. 
Um, we'll, 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 see, we'll see where that whole thing stands as, as we get into things a little bit later. But um, <laughs> yeah, if, if you just want to throw out the ESV uh, or whatever Bible in like hotel drawers and just replace it with a co- the printed comic book, um, <laughs> that, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Um, Lee Jiaog, that's why I hit all for the notifications. I would never see the videos otherwise. And see, the problem is, and I appreciate you doing this. Don't misconstrue that. But like the, the whole thing is like, even if you do, there's no guarantee that no, YouTube will even send out that notification to everybody. And that's what really fucking sucks. Like these are people who are already in my audience. They've hit subscribe. They have shown an interest in my work. And it's just like, eh, we won't let them know whenever this guy uh, uploads. In- instead, let's 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 promote what the hell else do they have up here? Actually, let me refresh it here. Let me see what the first thing that they recommend to me is. Um it appears to be some sort of anime clip and I do not recognize the show. I do not recognize the channel that uploaded it. And um, I'm generally very confused as to why this is even on my, my homepage. <laughs> I don't know. Apparently that's what the infallible algorithm thinks that I, I want to see. Even though, you know, typically, you know, they should be showing me more mythology um, history, true crime sorts of things like that. Nah, no, 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 no. You're, you're, a, you're a filthy weeaboo like the rest of us. Get wrecked, scrub. <laughs> um, I wonder if people are paying YouTube for viewership. Um, what do you mean by that? Like, in terms of like, premium and stuff like that because yeah i know that people pay the premium because they they're just so annoyed with ads i pay the premium more so because more so just to listen to music on my phone so i don't have to hear about you know my county's sheriff election every two seconds or whatever you know like that that's ridiculous but um we do get paid though if if you do have a um uh, premium membership and you do watch uh, content creators uh, stuff we do get paid for that so that's good um, but I mean if, if you just kind of go with it like through the, the free stuff and you you know you just watch the ads or whatever you still get paid for that too so I do think though that monetizing YouTube was a mistake because as soon as you invite money into any sort of platform or social media, you also invite greed. And greed tends to get out of hand, especially through people who are out of touch, and it ruins everything. Um, And by the way, if you guys watch my content, my content specifically, I can't speak to anybody else's content, but my content specifically with like an ad blocker on, go for it. Holy hell, I understand completely how annoying those ads are. And I will not take it as a slight against me personally, if you do not, you know, watch an ad on my video. And I don't, I don't see the the, the whole quarter of a penny that I would probably make through that. That that's totally fine. Turn on that ad blocker. I don't care. (laughs) Um, Honestly, it feels like YouTube doesn't have much respect or at least conscience for content creators who make niche videos. Obviously, not everyone will click on them, so the algorithm just kind of hurts them. Yeah, I mean, that that makes sense. Like, I, I can understand. Like, listen, I don't have any delusions of grandeur. I don't think that this channel is ever going to get to a million subscribers d- dealing with something as niche of a subject as, like, mythology. Okay. But, you know, I do know that there is a base of people out there who will show some sort of interest in this sort of stuff. And if I could get out to them, they probably would subscribe. Or, you know, some people 
have told me they don't even really care so much about the subject matter of, you know, what I try to be um, educational on. It, it's more so they like my style of humor. And it's like, yeah, no, I just subscribe for the jokes. I'm like, OK, that's fine, too. You know, either way, you know, <laughs> if if somebody likes the content and, you know, they the, the algorithm can clearly see that the user is specifically interested in that sort of thing. It should be recommended to them. Absolutely. 100%. <sighs> um, excuse me here. One second. I am going to have a little bit of a sip of tea. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go right back to it. Okay, so Crab Man about five minutes ago said, I'm probably going to sleep now, Messiah. It was nice hearing about your problems, and I hope your problem gets fixed. I, I don't like the way that you said that. It was nice to hear about your problems. <laughs> it almost sounds very sarcastic when you say it like that. I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna assume that you, you didn't mean it like that, but even still, it's like I, I don't I don't think anybody should necessarily be entertained by you know somebody bitching about their 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 internet problems necessarily but um hey i'm glad that i could entertain you at the very least so uh Turish, getting pigeonholed as a viewer is a pain in the ass youtube sucks at recommending me interesting things even when i try looking for something new yeah um honestly it, it's one of those things where they almost memory hole you a little bit. And what I mean by that is like you happen to watch one video one time from like one creator and then no matter how many times you refresh the page, you just keep seeing their stuff over and over and over again. It's just like, dude, I just happened to buy, buy this video by chance. I, yeah, I clicked on it, but that was that was supposed to be the end of it. Why do you think that I am now the, the world's biggest dick rider for this guy? You know, in, in, in lieu of other stuff that I potentially could be watching, which, yeah, I am a lot more interested in and I probably would subscribe to that sort of stuff. I don't know. It, it's very lopsided. And yet, yeah, with the disc button not gone, I can't even find reliable tech videos. Yeah. Um, what's really stupid about the whole dislike thing is like, you know, they, they were they, they made like the whole song and dance about it is like, oh, we're, we're trying to preserve like uh, creators self-esteem. Then why do creators why, why can creators very easily still see the dislike button? You know, the dislike button is more useful as a tool for me because if I'm looking up like a how-to video or whatever and the guy who is trying to explain it is an absolute idiot and what he is suggesting I do would probably set my house on fire, I would prefer to not waste my time watching the video and instead just see, oh, this guy got ratioed to hell and back. I'm not watching this crap, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, old man, balls and cash. Always took the Linkara method with ads. Mute them and then go take a dump or something. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole other discussion we could have in terms of like YouTube ads and stuff like that because I'm not the sort of person who is susceptible to ads, especially ads that I see like multiple times within like the span of like a commercial break or something on TV or you know in in like the same show it's just like do you think showing me subway you know four or five times within the, the, the course of an hour is going to make me any more hungry my brother in christ it is 3 a.m they're not even open <laughs> so But yeah, no, I mean, if that's what that if that's what you choose to do with it, by all means. But like if you're like the sort of person who is not at all susceptible to ads, you know, and like the ads that they show you are absolutely 
worthless and they do not influence like your purchasing decisions, by all means, like you should be using an ad block because it's because then it's just obnoxious. I'm actually the sort of person like full Cobra effect. If I see an advertisement for like a movie or like um, something like that, I typically s sit there and say to myself, wow, you wasted nearly a full minute of my day telling me about this stupid movie that's coming out. I'm not going to go see that out of spite. <laughs> Even if I'm moderately interested in it, I'm just going to say, yeah, you know what? No, <laughs> you pissed me off too much <laughs> by hitting me over the head with this shit. Um, Mr. Gemini's Tarot. Ha ha ha. Beat like a trailer. I tell where I, I, I assume you mean that the trailer park wife <laughs> thing. Uh, thank you. That, that was one of my off the top of my headlines. Um, Jesus, you deserve more cred, man. Well, thank you. I, 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 I do enjoy hearing that. Um, I try to keep my ego in check as much as I possibly can, but um, I, I'm, I'm glad that certain people think so. And, um, you know, maybe I do deserve more credit, but, um, you know, trying, trying not, not to, you know, not, not, not to crawl up my own ass too much. Um... <laughs> Tara says, I go for the chaos route for ads. I got a bot to click the ad 10,000 times from a VPN in Madagascar to fuck with their metrics. You were doing the Lord's work, <laughs> is all I can say. They absolutely hate people like you. And 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 I, I just think it's fantastic. Honestly, though, I don't I don't even understand how marketing is still such a huge field as it is anymore because you know a majority of marketing still is centralized around television how many people do you know unironically actually watch television or if they do they watch it you know without like a dvr or something like that where they just record the show that they want to see and then just skip past all the commercials you know like i don't under i don't understand you know like some of these companies they will spend you know, the rule of thumb for a movie, uh, I hate to use a movie as an example again, but the rule of thumb for movies is whenever you see the production cost for that movie, say like Disney shells out something that costs $750 million to make, which they probably could have made for five, but you know, whatever tax write-offs exist, you typically have to assume that you take that production value and then you double it for marketing. And it's really just like, okay, how many more butts are you putting in the seat for a fortune, massively more money than pretty much everybody in this chat and probably all of my subscribers put together and myself will ever see in their entire lifetime? You know, is it really worth it? Because that's, that's just the thing. People, they'll mute the ads, they'll go up, they'll take a shift, or, you know, they'll have a bot that clicks 10,000 times and then just feigns interest for it. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, Rudolph, sometimes I check out a video on learning a language like Spanish or French, and then YouTube immediately just fills my homepage with it. It makes me not want to check out those videos anymore. Yeah, I, I can understand that too, you know, especially with like, um, especially with like learning a language, you know, that's like a sort of thing where you, you have to take your own pace with it. And then, you know, it's like, or like if you're trying to learn how to play guitar or something like that, you know, you, you look how, how to play Smoke on the Water and then all of a sudden in your recommendations, it's like how to play Eddie Van Halen's Eruption or... You know, how, how to say hello in French and then all of a sudden it's just like how to deliver a a, a congressional speech in French it's like YouTube you are not helping me you are intimidating the hell out of me and making me not want to learn this anymore 
Um, Jared says, fun fact, a lot of marketing companies manage SEO and online ads now. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, though, I, I just don't think that it, I just don't think that it should exist in the same way that it does right now. Like you can go to college and, you know, major in marketing and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, but they keep teaching you the same generic crap that they have been teaching for decades now. And clearly people are not flocking to television anymore. In fact, a lot more people are getting pissed off just by having to sit through commercials and whatever. It actively drives them away. So I don't, I don't understand that whole mentality around that thing. And by the way, I, I, I realize that we, we absolutely diverted um, from the original point of the stream, which was to bitch about my editors and YouTube. Um, that's asotypical for these just chatting streams um, anymore. Now it's just going to be me basically talking back to the comment section. So if you guys do have anything to say, um, by all means, go ahead and, you know, ask about it. You, I'm an open book. I will, I will basically answer pretty much any, uh, any question that you pose. Um, minus, you know, post your, your SSI, um, your home address and, uh, credit card information. <laughs> uh, you're not going to get that out of me, but, um, pretty much anything else. I mean, I'm, I'm down to talk about. So even if like this sort of thing kind of bores you, you know, just talking about like mass marketing or whatever, go right ahead. Um, I guess the ads are just there to subconsciously influence people to notice those brands and some of them will buy stuff from the brand. Yeah. Like, listen, I'm, I'm not going to deny that there are sheeple out there and, you know, as soon as they see, you know, Oh, Burger King, me go eat Whopper, you know, that, 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 that sort of thing. There are people who do exist like that out there. And I do not doubt that those are the main target demographic that these sorts of people try to go after. That that does not surprise me in the least bit. But like, it just seems like any more, a lot more people are kind of waking up to the whole, you know, mass marketing scandal. And they're tired of all the bullshit. I know I am. Um... Lee Shadhawk, it's not just the commercials that are ups that is upsetting people. It's all this woke stuff they try to shove down people's throats. Yeah. Um it seems like every every other year or so I'll see, you know, some sort of article or some sort of video pop up. It's like wokeism is dead, guys. You know, we don't have to deal with like Disney Star Wars nonsense anymore or you know whatever else has been plaguing whatever other franchises it, 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 these people are finally gonna wake up and it's like okay and a month later they're back to bitching about wokeness and media <laughs> it's i i am curious to see just how much this, you know, the sort of pandering political marketing that is engaged between the right and left, let's be fair here, but it's mostly pro predominant amongst the, the left, uh, especially with like big studio crap. I'm curious to see how much more money they make or how much less money they make pandering as opposed to, you know, just kind of appealing to as many people as possible, you know, and stopping the whole, you know, political message thing and just, you know, coming out with like a product that appeals to everybody, you know, like I would think that would be more profitable, but of course there are also external factors at play. Like I mentioned before, ESG scores are the enemy of capitalism, of free markets in general. As far as I'm concerned, um, yeah, no, it's nonsense. 
truly is. But, um, you know, that's the world that we live in. Is it going to die? Eh, probably eventually, but I don't think it's going to die anytime soon. I, I, th I think that the problem, there, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of small factors involved in perpetuating like the whole, you know, woke media machine. And it all kind of compounds into the, this singular issue. It, it's not just one thing that you can point to and just say, oh, you know, fix that. And then, you know, all, all will be right as rain. No, 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 there, there, there's, there's a lot more to it. So I don't know. Will it eventually die? Probably. Will it take our entire civilization collapsing first in order to, to get to that point? Unfortunately, probably, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Rudolph says, I think the left just has more influence over media while the right in more standard business stuff. Um, I agree with it. I, I totally agree with the first part of that. The second part of it is just kind of like, I don't know about like the whole business aspect of thing, because like I said, like y you do see a lot of like these big corporations em embracing like this, this whole wokeness trend. And you, you do see it does affect their profit margins and, you know, their, their stock market value, but they still keep on doing it. And it's like, these are supposed to be really smart people who made, you know, billions of dollars working in business. You would think that they would be able to see the writing on the wall unless there was a secondary objective to the whole thing, which is where ESG comes in into play and the, the death of the free markets, yada, yada, yada. I'm an old man. I like to shout at clouds piss off <laughs> um plus the writing of the stories and character development is bad yeah um <laughs> fair enough i i mean i don't i don't think i've ever i don't think i've seen a new character in media recently who was well no 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 i can't say that a new character in media who was intended to be likable, who I actually ended up liking. I, I, I can't remember the last time I've, I've, I've seen something like that. Ironically enough, though, there have been characters in modern media who the exact inverse. They're written in a way in which you're supposed to absolutely hate them. And I end up adoring them. They're some of my favorites. <laughs> so... um. Tanya the Evil, all caps. Hey, Messiah, uh, will you be doing a video on any more gods? Like, for instance, uh, Orthus Cerberus, brother? Just wondering. Um, well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely going to be doing more videos on, like, gods and stuff like that. I mean, if you're if you're asking, like, more specifically about, like, um, Greek stuff, uh... <laughs> I definitely do have scripts finished for that sort of stuff. I just have to, you know, bother getting those recorded and then <sighs> then there's the whole issue of trying to find somebody who can actually edit the whole thing in a satisfactory manner and in a timely manner but um th there are definitely projects on the table like stuff like that um but i mean just in terms of like gods oh yeah absolutely you know we have um i know for a fact um mid-may um which is slightly less than a month uh, from today right now, uh, which is going to be my birthday, um, I'm going to do a video on uh, Raijin from uh, Shinto mythology. Um, and, you know, beyond that, we've got a whole bunch of different, like, character studies and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, I mean, we're definitely not slowing down. I'm not, I'm not slowing down necessarily because there's always, you know, a, a bevy of ideas, you know, that I can actually put it into the machine. It's more so like, if, if you ask me about something very specific, I can either tell you, yes, we are planning on doing it, or no, I haven't thought about doing it, but let me look into it and see if there's really 
the big issue anymore with like requests for videos is just like if there is enough material really to sift through to actually bother making like a full length video on them. Um, if not, I, I usually will say, hey, sorry, you know, I that's not really there. But um, no, I'm, I'm always taking suggestions. Um, if you if you have anything that you want to see, um, if you want to see specifically a Cerberus video or something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we could definitely look into that sort of thing. My whole thing is, is there really enough to make the video interesting? Is there enough information out there, A, and B, is there enough interesting information out there? So, that that's my very convoluted answer to your question, but uh, thank you for asking it. Um... And 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 Rudol and uh, Turish are now excited at the, at the mention of Raijin. <laughs> Guys, I hate to burst your bubble, but Shango is still my favorite Thunder God. But I do very much so like Raijin. Um, a, a lot of the stuff surrounding Raijin, especially like like the secondhand stuff, um, Japanese World War II propaganda or World War II era propaganda is some of the funniest shit I have ever seen in my life. And they do tend to incorporate mythological figures into it. And I, I, God, I love talking about Japanese mythology. It, it's just so great. And I, uh, we will eventually get to part six. Don't worry on the um, Kojiki, by the way, that's definitely in, in the works. I will dare say that I am getting very, ambitious in terms of like production value for that for that video in particular so it's probably going to be delayed quite a while i'm kicking a can down the road as i do with a lot of my stuff but rest assured it is coming um and i think you guys are really gonna like it it's, it's gonna be the you know the book ending the uh the second trilogy or whatever of those videos so try trying to be kind of flashy with it <sighs> okay um again if anybody has any more videos or <laughs> videos if anybody has anything else that they want to ask me about um or that have to do with like my videos or you know just in general you know shit my opinion on X, Y, or Z, you know, by all means, uh, go ahead and do so. Um, if not, um, I think we're just going to wind down the stream here a little bit and, um, end it here. Um, if, uh, if you guys are, are, are getting tired of hearing me, me talk, which I can definitely understand that if that is the case. Um, Uh, nice, thanks. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you. I, I will try to do so. Um, I'm not really a big fan of Japanese mythology. It's cool and all, but I think there are better mythologies. Yes, Olin, we know you, you love your Aztec mythology. You've made that abundantly clear. <laughs> uh, oh, Lady Shagun, that's an interesting question. Uh, when doing your research, where do you start? Okay, so typically... What it is, is half the time when I do find a subject that I want to cover, it usually starts with me like goldfishing around. You know, I'll do like a standardized search of something on like Wikipedia or whatever. And you know how they like redirect to different articles. And I'll be reading about this and I'm like, wait a minute, this is way more, in this sounds way more interesting than, you know, what I previously was reading about. Hold on, let me click on that. And then, you know, I'll go into there and then, you know, it leads to a, a convoluted web until you, until then the idea kind of comes into fruition as to what I want to do. Typically what I do then is I bookmark that page. Um, if they say something very bombastic in like the article or whatever, I usually try to track down the source that they cite, 
like the actual source itself, um, to try and read that, the passage that pertains to it. And then I also have my massive collection of books that I keep bragging about, like a, like a frat boy likes to, you know, compliment the, the size of his own dick. I, I have a very wide, girthy, veiny collection of mythology books that I typically like to use as reference materials. So, you know, whenever I can, um, I try and like look into like, you know, if I have a book on, say, I, I don't know. Yeah, why, why, why am I having trouble trying to think of an example? Let, let's say I want to do a video on the Thunderbird. And I have a couple of different books on like Native American different mythologies or whatever. I'll pull those off the shelf. I'll look in the index. I'll look for mentions of the Thunderbird. Go to those pages. If it's relevant information, I'll bookmark it, highlight it, you know, do whatever. And then... Um, Towards the end, it's just about compiling it all together in uh, in a script, and also you know thinking of you know uh, uh, funny japes that I that I that I can in include. Um, so <laughs> that big book energy. Let me let, let let me tell you something, son. I I I got I got some some mighty. F some mighty big books <laughs> some some books that, that that would make your mama cry if i showed them <laughs> i don't even know what the fuck i'm saying anymore <laughs> um so when are you going to show your collection of books <sighs> lady um preferably sooner rather than later i have said i'm waiting to move into a new place and hopefully somewhere where I have a little bit more material to kind of like spread it out because I mean to look at my bookshelf right now in in, in a word or two it's a mess it it's horribly disorganized I got books lying on top of books and, and, and shit like that it, like they're completely crammed in there so hopefully when I have a little bit more space and I can, you know, maybe get some extra bookshelves and stuff like that and get a little bit more organized and a little bit more tidy and presentable for a video. Yeah, I will. I will absolutely make that video. Rest assured, it is coming eventually. <laughs> that word is absolutely an asterisk, but um, good question, though. Um, oh, hold on here. I got a ping here in the discord oh this is from um tart for whatever reason his um youtube isn't working but he can he, he does tend to watch um he said messiah uh thoughts on the next pokemon game um i'm very very glad that you know they they said you know release date 2025 I was like, oh, thank God, you know, we're not doing this thing where they do like a new game every single year and they rush it out. And it, it just turns out to be like some incomplete janky mess, you know, every, every time that they do it. Um, now, that being said, because they are delaying it until, you know, sometime next year, I have no idea when, but sometime next year my expectations are a little bit more raised. I'm like, okay, I expect it to work to be a functional game from day one at launch. Um, I would love to see a Pokemon game on the Switch that actually has all the Pokemon because they absolutely can do it. They've been lying about that for years now that oh no, due to hardware limitations and yada yada, that's like bullshit. You could absolutely do a game with a complete national dex. You you just have, you, you, you've just been got, gotten lazy with it. So I, I would definitely like to see that. Um, it's a Legends game. So hopefully it's going to be very similar to um, PLA, which is my favorite uh, game that has come out in the Switch era, at least as far as like Pokemon goes. But um, 
Yeah. Um, I am pleased, but cautiously optimistic, I guess, would be an accurate summation of my thoughts on that. Um... Lady Shyhawk says, you could just show 10 books and explain why you bought it and a summary of them. I mean, yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, Jesus Christ, you want me to do that now? I mean, like, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, 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 I'll show I'll show my ugly ass mug on on on, on camera. I'll, I'll turn on the fucking webcam. I'll, I'll scare all the, the small children within a 10 mile vicinity and give them nightmares um, just to show off my, my my big, thick, girthy book collection. <laughs> or just just a few of them. <laughs> just a few of them. Uh, yes, show me your big book. <laughs> Durish fucking never got my full deck since Gen 7. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the thing, like... Um, I remember when Home first came out, I actually bothered to do like the full living decks. And after I was done with it, I was looking at it and I was like, huh, this was a lot of work and for a whole lot of nothing, essentially, because I can't even, you know, inject all of these guys in, into the same game. I, I, I feel like I just wasted my time. <laughs> Um, AZ should have Mega Evolutions. I think they already, conf well, they, they tease that they will have Mega Evolutions. If you're saying, like, new Mega Evolutions, I would love to see that personally. But, um, yeah. Uh, Devil HDX, what's this live about, y'all? Um... Well, I mean, basically, we kind of got, got have already gone over, like, the main crux of everything. Um, to summarize, I'm having issues with the performance of my video editors. I'm not mad at them. More so disappointed. And then the rest of it was uh, me bitching about YouTube uh, throttling my channel. So, I mean, if that's something you're interested in, um, you can definitely play back. Um, from the beginning, after this, uh, after we're done with the whole live recording, if not, I mean, more power to you, man. I probably wouldn't waste time, too much time looking into it myself. So, um, okay, guys, uh, let me go ahead here really quick. I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get away from the mic here. If it sounds like I'm rowboating away, that's because I'm just going over to my bookshelf to pick out some things to show you guys. Um, ooh, this is an interesting one. This is also an interesting one. These are all interesting ones. <laughs> um, I've already shown these ones off before. Um, I'm not going to bore people with that. It's a cute little one. Throw that in there. Um, ooh, this is a really good one. If I can get it out. Uh, what is that? Four? Um, you're, you're probably not going to get the whole ten. I'll, I'll, I'll show you like maybe five. Just because it would be a massive pain to take them all out and put them back again. Uh, maybe that one. I don't know if that's necessarily super interesting. I have that one. Yeah, let's just grab this one for right now. Okay. Oh, God. Big, girthy books. <laughs> um, well, fuck YouTube. Uh, man, your channel is dope. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, yes, fuck YouTube. <laughs> um, all right, so, uh, let me go ahead here. I, I apologize for, um, frightening all of you. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the cam. E. Um, by the way, we do have the uh, virtual background up right now just simply because there's a, there's a sign right above my bed that has my last name. Um, I'm not willing to divulge that information just yet with you guys. Uh, I do love you, but uh, not, 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 get, not, not handing out everything. All right, uh, so let's go ahead here. We'll start here with um, the Book of Yokai by Michael Dillon Foster. Uh, focus, please. There we go. Um, this is a little bit more of like a, a well-known book. I know um, the website, there is a, a website, I think it's called like Daily Yokai or something like that. They typically use this as like a reference. And you'll see it has like, it'll focus. Uh, the articles pertaining to the particular yokai. And, you know, sometimes it'll include like the illustrations or whatever. Um, sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll go so far as to like tell you like what their names mean if you break it down um, into the kanji or whatever. So, you know, they're, they're talking and, you know, it sorts it based off of like water creatures, creatures of the field, um, things like that. And of course it does have an index in the back. So if I'm specifically looking for something like, uh, say the Suchinoko, um, I can go ahead and just jump to whatever page that's on. Um, I actually just had it, which is why I <laughs> bothered to mention it. And now it seems I have lost it. I'm so professional guys. Oh, here it is. All right. Excuse me. Suchi Gumo. Um, page 129 right here and then you know it gives you the whole write-up and um what i like about this one is if i can show it it has a detailed bibliography of everything that he talks about and every work that he cites which is nice for me because i typically like to reference um a lot of different things when i when i do tend to you know do my videos and uh, Rudolf says, yeah, it's a yokai Pokedex. Yep, essentially. <laughs> Very topical <laughs> for what we've been talking about. Um, go ahead and put that over there. Next thing I want to show you guys is, um, it's a, again, a little bit more of a generic book. But this is the uh, Iliad. <laughs> the Iliad. Here, hold on. Let me, let me do this. I'm going to tilt my camera. Hopefully it doesn't show that. And then I'll go into my settings here when I can figure out how to do that and get rid of the automatically generated green screen background. Maybe, maybe not. Apologies, guys. I'm trying to do this best I can. Uh virtual background none please okay there we go that works um so the next one i want to show is the iliad the graphic novel variation of it by uh gareth hines or illustrated i guess by gareth Hines. it was written by homer obviously and you know like it's essentially just what it sounds like it is essentially the whole text of the iliad but it's presented in like a comic format. So it's a little bit easier to digest. Um, you know, you have a better idea of like who's speaking at whatever particular moment. Um, I will say this is a bit more of an abridged version of the Iliad. It doesn't have the like Thersites in it, which is, it might be a big deal for some people, uh, or might not be a big deal for some people, but that's personally my favorite part of the Iliad. But um yeah, no, they, they did this for the Iliad as well as the Odyssey. Um, they might have even done one for the Aeneid. I don't know. I haven't checked up on it in a couple years to see if they have done uh, anything of that sort. But here's that. Uh, next thing. Picked this up in Barnes & Noble a couple years ago. The Mythical Creatures Bible. And uh, this, this is actually really neat because um, it, it is kind of like a um, 
you know, more like a, a book of yokai sort of thing. But um, it kind of sorts it by like certain categories or whatever. So like in here, it, it talks about like insects and it goes over like, you know, different insect sort of creatures from different world mythologies. So like it's Papalot, um, uh, Thire, Suchigomo right there, even though spiders are not insects. But <laughs> And then, you know, Arachne right next to it. The ant lion, which look at that illustration. Look at that illustration. If there was more information on this guy, I would absolutely love to do a video on him, but there isn't. Just simply for the, just simply for that alone. That that cracks me up. But uh yeah, no, this is like a a nice little pseudo bestiary. Um you know, cockatrice definitely is more of like the bestiary stuff on YouTube, but um, every once in a while, if I see something that interests me, I'll probably eventually make a video on it. Uh, next up, uh, this is this is the big boy. <laughs> this is the uh, 54 books of the Apocrypha, um, which is basically not every pseudo-biblical book that you could possibly want to read in terms of like, you know, um, pertaining to like stuff that was left out of the Bible, but it does have quite a few things. It's got Tobit, Judith, Wisdom, um, First, Second, Third, Enoch, um, Testament of Abraham, Testament of Isaac, Testament of uh, Jacob, um, the Ladder of Jacob, which is, um, if you guys remember back to that Quadruple B episode, I actually referenced this book um, to kind of, you know, say hey listen according to these guys the <laughs> jacob's ladder was like a an eldritch abomination with like faces or whatever just kind of like screaming and like reaching out from like this wall of flesh it yeah it's <laughs> um when i eventually do a jacob character study i'll probably make mention of it and um the last book i want to mention um at least for right now, um, which has been infinitely useful, uh, especially with uh, regards to the Ars Goetia script that I am still working on, um, is uh, The Dictionary of Demons um, by uh, Margaret Bellinger. Um, it's just what it sounds like, you know, it sorts like all these different demons according to alphabetical order, um, every once in a while you'll get like a fun little illustration or whatever um, and it'll give you like related articles to them um, the sorts of Go Goetias that they cite for like sources on this material um, yeah and like if it is something that is featured in like the Ars Goetia and if it has like a, a sigil it'll include it there so yeah typically a very um Nice little interesting book that definitely helps out um, in terms of that. And uh, with that, I'm going to stop the cam so you do not have to see my receding hairline anymore. And uh, go ahead here and I will catch up a chat here in just a second. Put away my big books, my big, my big girthy books. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right, so um, you should make a video on Shanima if you haven't already, which I haven't. Um, <laughs> some stories have many parallels to some cult books like The Lesser Key of Solomon and other books that talk about the Jinn encounters. Um, definitely something I'll look into. Um, I know when, in doing like research for like the Gars Goetia video, um, I do go off into like a little bit of a tangent into like other demons. So that may eventually kind of like find itself in, in, in intertwined with like the whole script there. Um, so that'll just, uh, you know, that'll bump up that video to a, to a solid seven hours long <laughs> when it eventually gets done. So, um, everybody here seems to be commenting on the size of my book. 
yes, I know it's very, it's very, it's very impressive. Um, uh, okay. Um, all right. Um, so if that is uh, satiating your guys's um curiosity for things um i'll i'll, I'll, gi I'll give the chat here another couple couple more minutes and uh we'll see we'll see we'll see if anybody has any more questions or anything that i can uh pertain to but uh six hours and 66 minutes would be better damn that makes seven hours though yeah seven hours and six minutes um not going to promise anything in terms of like I, I, I all I'll say is that the video is going to be long the video is going to be super duper long I just finished Payman who is number 9 of the Ars Goetia and by word count the script is already longer than Satan which is as of right now the longest video on my channel at nearly an hour long and uh we got we got 62 more of these chuckle fucks to go through so yeah. um you could do the book videos as a way to organize your bookshelf maybe even find books that you have not seen in a while yeah but that's self-improvement and we don't necessarily do that around here you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm supposed to be everybody's disappointment you know, why do people look up to me? What is wrong with you? Don't let your kids watch this. You're bad parents if you do. <laughs> Unless you're showing it just to say, now look, little Jimmy, this is how I don't want you to turn out. <laughs> um, Rudolph, going to be a long-ass video or more? Yeah, no, it abso no absolutely. It's going to be a long-ass video. I'm... I'm going to, I'm going to say, you know, full transparency. If you're going to watch that video, like in one sitting, you're probably going to have to put it on like in an aux cable on like a, like a road trip or something like that. Honestly, like a cross country road trip. Well, I don't know. Um, I'm going to DC this summer and that's looking to be about a six hour drive. So Maybe not cross country, but it'll get you. It'll get you like a solid three or four states away. <laughs> um, why not? You might even find a fascinating subject that draws you in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, that's that's just typical of anything I look into, though, lady. You know, um, God, you know, it's just. Some people have said, you know, why don't you actually read through the books that you use as reference material? And I'm just like, motherfucker, you know how long that would take me? <laughs> you would never see me again. <laughs> I'm astounded that I that I can even read lengthy books in general as of right now. You know, like, um, I'm sure people don't really want to talk about it, but... Um, I very recently have gotten into like the Game of Thrones books um, just this past January and I'm on and I'm like halfway through like book three right now. So I'm making pretty good headway in it. And like I have not read this much for leisure since like before high school even. Um, pretty proud of myself, actually, if I if I do say so. Uh, reading is good for you. Uh, do it, kids. It, 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 just do it. <laughs> Um, actually, I rarely saw anybody dive into the history of those demons in the Ars Goetia. All of them were either ancient kings or old gods. It would be nice to see you trace the influences back to its core. That's typically what I try to do uh, with a lot of them. Um, some entries are definitely going to be longer than others. Like, um, well, like I said, um, Payman's going to be uh, quite a girthy one. Like I said, that one and Osmodius. Um, which are the two that I've gotten to around to as of right now. 
those two can basically be character study, individual character studies in and of themselves. And I'm just kind of incorporating them into a minor video that includes a prologue talking about the history of the sources. And then, you know, I, I try, I try to touch up on as much as I can, uh, particularly the inf interesting fringe information that appeals to me in my nerdy, my nerdy little brain. So, um, LMAO, yeah, those books be long. Yeah, they are long, but, um, I'm enjoying them still so far. Um, my only thing is I'm a little bit nervous once I get done with this third book, because then there starts to be like gaps between like the publication dates like substantial gaps between the publication dates of like the books and i'm just like oh am i gonna slowly start to see this old man's mind degrade <laughs> over the years <laughs> like feast for crows came out like five years after storm of swords and then uh dance with dragons was like six years after that and we are still waiting on book number number six um a full 13 years later so <laughs> which in all honesty, that's probably, that book's probably never going to come out, but <laughs> oh, well, um, I actually use other people's videos to find books of interest in mythology. Oh, well, there you go. So you have a, you have an invested interest in this. You, you corporate lobbyist trying to get me to make videos on my, on my books. I, I, I see where you're coming from lady. Don't, 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 don't think I'm not on to you. I, I demand retribution. Give me your cat. Your cat is cute. <laughs> Give him to me. Um, Osmodeus is interesting indeed. Yeah, especially if, you, if especially if you like look into like um a lot of like the more fringe stuff. Like um, th there there are a lot of like um, Second Temple period writings that like I probably I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of, but um, they do have very interesting um, entries concerning um, certain demons. Uh, just just ones with higher name recognition, though, so. Um, oh, yeah, motherfucker would be taking so long to write his books. Yeah, I mean, he started back in, well, he didn't start, but the, he published the first book all the way back in, like, 1996. And it's like, you hear that, and it's like, oh, okay, so the series has been over for a while now. You know, the HBO series concluded, much to everybody's dismay. <laughs> and it's like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Everybody's still huffing copium. They're saying, oh, this year's going to be the year, guys. He's, he's, he's going to pull through. And so it's like... Dude, he's 75 years old. Even if he gets this book done, he's not going to ever get out the seventh book before he fucking croaks. Um, I don't think I will be able to read the Game of Thrones uh, due to the fact that it might not be completed. I hate starting a new series only to not have an ending. Yeah. Um, welcome to my life. That happens to be like a, most of the IPs that I tend to like it's uh usually something that ends up getting canceled before it's time or they kind of like rush the ending and it gets like a really terrible you know something that they just kind of cobbled together at the last second um yeah welcome to my life lady <laughs> that, that that just tends to be things that interest me it's 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 the curse of uh of messiahisms basically if i say i like anything that probably just means that it's not going to get a, a satisfactory conclusion which makes it fun because then you can write your own and then and then, and then you can you can have characters probably would never bone according to the the author's original intention but it's okay you can write your dirty smut nobody's gonna judge you except everybody who reads it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Rudolph is saying uh, Dune never had a proper ending because um, Frank Herbert died before he could finish it. Now I am told that his son took up the pen 
and he like looked through his father's notes and wrote the last book but I'm told not even to bother with it because it's terrible so I will probably not be doing that I, I would like to read Dune though at least the books that um, that uh, Frank Herbert wrote himself so yeah and he says basically right after that I mean there's his son's books but they're not particularly well regarded yeah that's <laughs> that's what I hear but um, from what I understand that man is trying to make a bankroll off of his father's IP because he has written like god I don't know how many books just like pertaining to like you know extra canonical material or whatever and it's just like wait 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 to take something and write it till it's raw man <laughs> like jesus all right well guys uh we've been going for about two hours that's pretty good um I'll give it like maybe another two minutes or so. Wait for the delay to catch up. If anybody has anything that they um, want to ask is like a last minute thing, let it be known. And then after that, I for real this time will end the stream. <laughs> I'm gonna have some peanut butter M&Ms. Is delicious. Uh, why won't you like Invincible except for Omni Man? Omni Man is the only interesting character in the entire in the entire thing. You know, literally every time I I, I, I turn it on, it, it focuses on like Mark and his teenage bullshit drama or whatever. I'm just like, man, I don't care. Tell tell me more about this guy who is like weighing the uh the loyalties between his his race his very people and the and his new family and the internal conflicts that come from that that is much more interesting than aliens coming from mars that you know take over people's mind generic superhero bullshit like that omni-man is just that, that's, that's just what I mean. Like, Omni Man's like the most interesting part of the series, and he's really the only reason why I watch it. So, you know, I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Um, Lisha Hug, how are you feeling now that you let everything out? Do you feel more motivated or still the same? It kind of depends. Um, it's going to depend more or less on like whether or not like I actually do get any like, um, feedback from like my editors and you know like they they'll say like oh you know I'm, I'm sorry that I've been de delaying this so long and you know I'll try to do better or whatever you know this that or the third um in terms of like letting things out I don't know I don't like I said it's not this it's not something that makes me mad if it was something that made me mad you know then I then I could you know pal my keyboard, you know, go chop some wood or something, anything to like re relieve stress, you know, through like some sort of physical action, like a jerk off all night, you know, and, and get that out of my system. But, um, I, I don't, I don't know. Like this is more so like something that I kind of want to see results from. Like I know the YouTube shit, never going to hear anything, never going to hear anything more about it. I think I've I've told this um, this story before. I think I've even shown the email. It might have been like on a quadruple V stream, but um, I literally have emailed YouTube before about like the notification things, and they essentially told me, "Oh, go pound sand. Your 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 subscribers are just stupid. They they they, they don't follow our super convoluted um, notification process. You know what you should do? You should tell them to turn on notifications." Oh, okay, that's great. How am I going to tell them if they can't even get notified that I uploaded a video telling them to do that? <laughs> uh, Bubblegum Gun, what did I miss? Literally everything. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you we're about ready to wrap up. 
Um, so, what is the next uh, quadruple B? Um, whenever I have a day off where I will not be disturbed um, to actually do the live stream, and when YouTube will actually cooperate and you know let people know, hey, Messiah is live. Go watch him, you you stupid fucks. Or at least that's how YouTube would address you guys. I would never call you stupid fucks. Well, maybe some of you, but <laughs> yeah, um, it's dependent on a lot of different things. But the next episode's all ready to go. It's just you know I, I need to find time to really actually go live with it. So. had those M&Ms melting in my hand. That's supposed to be like the whole marketing thing is that they melt in your mouth and not in your hand. Well, why, 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 why is my hand all technicolor now? M&Ms, you lying bastards. And yes, I know the irony. M&M is eating M&Ms. Ha 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 ha. Meanwhile, the other Eminem, if she was awake, would probably be thinking of some sort of comment to um, sexually harass me with. <laughs> so, it all comes full circle, boys and girls. Um, uh, any more random videos pop up? <laughs> Excuse me. Any more random videos pop up in your channel uh, that you noticed? I'm still confused about how that happened. Um... No, um, not that I've seen. Um, I don't know how that happened either. Um, for context, everybody, um, Lady had let me know um, that on one of the playlists on my channel, I think it was the Mythological Character Studies, there's like two random videos that just popped up in there. It was like a music video and like somebody's Let's Play gameplay footage or whatever. And it's just like they're just there. They just popped up in the in the middle of the playlist, and I'm just like, well, I didn't add these to them. These are all my stuff, so I don't I don't understand how they got there. I I still don't understand how they ended up there either. So they're gone now. Um, but I, I would still just kind of ask you guys, you know, kind of keep an eye on that sort of thing because. A lot of times that could happen, and I just wouldn't even notice it. So, um, I don't think it was like a hack or anything like that. I think it was just YouTube being stupid, as per usual. So, yeah. Um, you're becoming an Eminem. Oh no! Don't tell me I'm going to become the green Eminem. Then everybody's going to want to fuck me. And turn me into milk chocolate. <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for um, sitting around and listening to me bitch and moan for um, roughly two hours now. Uh, appreciate having you all uh, come onto the stream. It was uh, nice, uh, you know, being able to talk to you guys. Um, I will uh, catch you all whenever the fuck I decide to go live next, or if, if you are in the Discord, we do occasionally do the VC down there, so go ahead and join that if you aren't a part of it already. And uh, with that, I uh, will see you all next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. Have a God's blessed day, and a good yard. <laughs>